I'm looking at one verse, of course, Proverbs 22, verse number 6, which is a very familiar passage of Scripture. And um, as we look at Proverbs chapter 22, verse number 6, I want to talk to you today about children chronicles. Children chronicles. Um, chronicles, of course, are facts of events that are normally ranged in chronological order um, on a timeline. And so, therefore, um, I want to talk about children chronicles. And we're looking at Proverbs chapter 22, verse number 6. This is what the Word of God says. And um, God bless all of our tiers of leadership and our ministers and all of you guys' children. This is what it says. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Hey, for, for just a few moments that I've, I've given myself, um, amen, I want to just talk to you about, again, children chronicles. Children's chronicles, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, um, again, as we look at this particular passage of scripture, this proverb, of course, is written by wise Solomon. And Solomon is giving us some very good information when it comes to um, raising children. It is clinically uh, discovered that there are stages of a child's life for development. And there are critical stages that we must be very aware of as they are growing as toddlers and growing as um, youth all the way into young adult. But even, brothers and sisters, all the way down to baby, it's important that we understand on the day the chronicles of children and then our part in raising children. Ladies and gentlemen, let me begin because we're spending this month talking about families and we're building or we're master building. This is our master building year. All year long, we're talking about master building. And in master building, uh, we cannot talk about husbands and wives and families without including at least one Sunday just to talk about children. Because, you know, when I look uh, throughout literature, there are so many books that if you want to be a strong man that will help you to be a strong man. Um, T.D. Jakes, uh, the Dr. Miles Monroe, uh, even Dr. Phil and some of them, uh, some of those others, um, Kenneth Hagen have books that will help you to become a strong man. Uh, T.D. Jakes calls it He-Man. And there are other books and helps uh, to, to, to help you develop into a stronger man. Women, there, there, there's books. If you want to be a great, a phenomenal woman that is written by various authors, uh, brothers and sisters, that will help you to develop, come into yourself, evolve into a phenomenal woman and cause you to walk in victory. Oh, there, there, there's so many books. Well, well, even if you are husband and wife and you want to have a stronger marriage, there are books, there's literature. And the reason why I'm talking about literature is because uh, lately for the last month in our Bible study circles, we've been talking about knowledge and getting information. And so therefore there's information out there. There's so much to strengthen marriages and to help uh, husband and wives. But you know what I discovered? That when it comes down to raising children, there isn't much to be said about raising children because, unfortunately, children don't come out the womb with a manual. And how you raise one child is not necessarily the way you can raise another child. You cannot treat 
your children, if you have more than one, you can't treat them the same, but you can treat them right. And one of them may be responsible, you know, taking care of business, and the other one may be uh, laying around and just lazy, just don't want to do nothing, and you can't seem to get them going, and what worked with one didn't work for the other, and how you were raised don't seem like this child, just seems like one child is an alien. Where did you come from, and how did I get you, and, and, and you must come from your daddy's side, you know. Uh, your mother's <laughs> ladies and gentlemen and, but, but there's no real manual or anyone who can pinpoint how do I raise children and how do I handle the challenge of raising children one of the things in my time of meditation uh, I wanted to make sure I shared with you that's why as we have warned you about not entering into marriages uh, unadvisedly or not being uh, ready for marriage and making sure that you're ready before you jump into marriage, the church has to also talk to us about not jumping into parenthood before you're ready. And, and, and ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, one of my convictions here lately is, 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 is making sure that we as a church become very transparent. We're now starting to open up the conversations uh, here at our church about marriage, about husband, about wife, about some of the struggles and the vicissitudes of, of, of living a godly life. Uh, but then there's another thing we have not entered into talking about, and that is children and family planning and family planning because we need to talk to some of us because if I'm not ready uh, as a man, as a woman, uh, I'm incomplete and not whole and have not gotten my personal convictions together and have not, I have not drawn uh, down on what is ethical and morally right and I have not uh, uh, found that uh, a contrast of my own personal convictions and values ladies and gentlemen you might want to halt hold on uh, press the brakes when it comes to bringing another being into this world while you're still trying to figure it out And then, that, that, that's for one group, but then, what about those of us who do have children? Now, Pastor, let's deal with that, because we're doing the best we can. And, and I, I, I discovered that in this one verse of Solomon, he really, in one verse, covers a plethora of information. I believe if you scratch... This verse number six of Proverbs chapter 22, uh, you're going to find some very important truths that he is trying to share with us when it comes down to uh, having children and raising children. Because what I discovered, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't have anything for the screens today, so you're just going to, uh, if you would, just write these things down. Uh, that, that he says this word, train up. You know, train up. Um, and, and, and when I saw the word train, I began to cringe because he did not use the word raise a child, but he specifically used the word train up. And I thought about training, you know, training, whether it's basic training or whether it's weight training or any kind of training, whether it's cross-country training. And I discovered that, number one, training is hard work. Anyone who's going through training or, or some type of, of rigorous training, whether it's, you know, weight training, you know, as I said, you know, cross-country training, uh, physical training, training alone, training alone is hard work. But what he says is train up a child. Stop right there. And when you look at training up a child, I need to let you know, and I'm going to get a couple of amens from this side and over here and over here, that it is hard work 
I want to tip my hat off to you and you and you for those of us who are trying to train up a child or some of you trying to train up a grandchild or grandchildren so forth. I feel you. I'm with you. I, I understand because it is not easy. It is hard work that raising children today is not like when you were coming up and I was coming up. There, there, there's so much more on the outer periphery of life that, that is pulling at our children and that, that a, a, a man, the, the, the television ha, has gone uh, to, to great influence, uh, internet, there, there's so many things and we can get lost in a generational oblivion because it's just hard to keep up with what are they doing. You don't know what Snapchat is, you, you don't know what Instagram, so, a, a man, I heard some young people say, I'm going to get off Facebook because now my grandma has figured out how to do it. And so I'm going to something else. And so, you know, when you seem like you're catching up with them, amen, they scoot right on off. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now they can play video games without the disc and do it online. I mean, there's so much. These new terms that are coming up, these new little gadgets and little things that children are involving in. And, and you know, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it's, it's not the same. It is not the same. It is not the same. And if you don't be careful, you'll pull your hair out trying to figure out this new generation and, and raising children and, 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 and I said one time uh, to Yolanda I was crying almost as a father and I said my daddy didn't have the kind of problems with me that I'm having with my boy all my daddy had to do was look and he didn't have to say now I got to literally stand over you straddle you and put my hands around you I ain't gonna tell you everything <laughs> Amen. Drag you out the room. Amen. Get up on you and you know what you want to do. What's up? You ain't that bad. I mean, literally. And it, it'll break your heart because when you look at where we are in this generational difference. And so, and I want to tell you this what God is also trying to do for us is also stretch us. I got to say that. He's trying to stretch us. One of the biggest, I, Yolanda has helped me with this. She says, sometimes, Chet, one of the things, one of the hardest things to do, listen to me, don't take this wrong. I got to just share this with you. She says, one of the hardest things to do, Chet, is sometimes is to unlearn what you've learned. You know? And I'm going to show you in just, in just a moment because I got to hurry this message. But I, 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 was, I was doing my best, watch this, to raise my boys the same way Chester Brown Jr. and Ora Lee raised me. And, 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 and nobody told me it wouldn't work because the only thing I had is how I was raised. The only thing Yolanda had is how she was raised. And now, now, now I'm not talking about foundation yet. I'm not talking about the foundation because there's some foundational stuff that never changes. Let me go and get that in there. Amen. There's some foundational things that must be laid, and that don't change from generation to generation. Since I'm already there, let me go and say some of them. Manners. Manners don't change. Yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Yes, sir, no, sir. So, some things don't change. Don't walk up on me and go to talking. Say, excuse me first, and then wait on me to acknowledge you. Oh, see here. See, see, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be nice, but some of y'all acting like you don't know what I'm talking about. See, because my mama still talks and her brother still talk about my grandmama on the, on the front porch talking with Miss Agnes. And they would talk in the evening and they would come out there and they had to wait until my grandmama acknowledged them. And they did not stand there too long because they were having grown folk conversation. And there were certain conversations that children don't need to be in. And they told me that granny dipped snuff. And so since grand and dip snuff you stand there and be disrespectful you're gonna get some snuff in your eye because she gonna all right but you knew your place we're in a generation now that children don't really know their place they've been involved in too much grown folk conversation and now they think they grown just like you grown and they think they can talk just like you talk and they think they can do just like you do and no you can't
but now, watch this, but now, but now, I ain't trying to come get none of y'all out of jail. Because you can't put your hands on them. Like hands was placed on you. But I told mine the other day, don't let me have to put my paws on you. I learned that from my middle son. From Cole taught me that. Don't let me have to put my paws. And I had to tell them one day. I, recently, I said, don't let me have to put my paws on you now. And I'm going to put the telephone right here just in case you need to call. It is. This will be the last time you ever tell me. I press nine and one and dare you to press the other one. That'll be the last one. Because if they come get you, they can take you. But I guarantee you, you're going to call me wanting to come back because you'll realize how good you really got it. And, and so, ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we got some work to do because training a child is hard work. But listen to this. Not only is it hard work, it takes consistent work it, it, it takes consistent work in other words daily see in training you ain't gonna gain nothing if you do it every now and then it has to become a daily routine mama dad and it also not only has to be consistent work by way of it being daily, but it has to become your duty. We brought them in here. In the words of my daddy, whether we meant to bring them in or we were just having some fun one night, we, we, we brought them in. <laughs> and they're here. And so now, it got to be your duty. The training has to be your duty. It has to be our duty. And then we have to give direction. Huh? Are y'all are y'all understanding what the pastor's saying? It is consistent work. Now, remember in the series, this same series, Pastor's giving you some principles that in this consistent work, what must we? I'm getting to the children in just a moment, but let me just do some review. What must we as parents? Uh, do consistently. Uh, we must watch what we do consistently. Because, here we go, make, make sure you write this down, this is what Pastor been saying all month long, is that, it, that, that we, before we can become mentors to our children, we first have to be models. That, 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 that we even though we're, we're, we're doing the best we can, we, we have to make sure that we're disciplined. Make sure we're disciplined. Make sure we are disciplined. Because we always, you two and I, see, what impacted my life the most is not what my daddy said. It's what he showed. And, and, and what got Jesus' disciples' attention is him first being a model. And when they understood him as a model, not that he was perfect, but the fact of that, he knew that it was important for him to model, be a model for them to mimic. Then when you are a model for them to mimic, because they're going to do what they see, not what you say first. So then after you are a model, then you're able to mentor. That's why us as parents got to stay before the altar. You know, I used to go, I, daddy was up every morning at 6 a.m. But I didn't see him until 6.45, that's every morning. Because I messed around and I would walk in the room where daddy was in mom and daddy's bedroom and from 6 a.m., I knew if daddy wasn't up at 6 a.m., he's sick, something's wrong. But he would be on his knees. So I saw that model. Because the first place he always would fall was on his knees. 
And so now there's something in me that's saying, if you want to be a good parent, when you get out of bed, fall on your knees. Why? Because that's what was modeled in front of me. Because we're going to reflect and resemble what was modeled in front of us. So if that works for us, it's going to work for our children. That the first thing I want to make sure I do is do my best to be a model. It's important, and I know we all have uh, uh, different situations. I understand that. But, but I'm going to ask you to do the best you can to be a good model. Be a good model. I'm looking around. It's okay. It's okay. But I need to tell you one more time. I'm looking, I'm looking at you. I, I feel you. You know, pastor, you don't know my situation and how rough it's been. I understand. But, but, but sis, I need you to just work by the way of the Lord Jesus Christ on modeling. Just, 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 just model. Just, 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 just model. Just model because by the time you get ready to mentor, bruh, sis, by the time you get ready to mentor, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it, your, your mentorship is going to be more powerful because of the model. Because training a child is hard work, but it's a consistent work. But at the end, it's going to be a good work. It's going to be a good work. It's going to be a good work. Oh, yeah. I'm looking for a return on what I planted and what I sowed in my child. It don't always look like it's going to come to pass. And I want to encourage some parent here today that modeled and mentored the best you could. I want to encourage you that good seed is going to come up. Takes a while. Some of them going through the rebellious stage. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You can't do the best you can and the best not eventually become a rewarding factor. That if you, you plant a good seed, you've got to expect there to be a good harvest. Now, 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 some of you can't see the harvest because you're still looking at the weeds. But I, I, I'm asking you to just wait a little while because, because, because I believe what you have harvest is going to grow stronger and higher than the weeds you're looking at right now. Boy, do I have anybody to join me in faith right now? A a amen. That, that, that God can bring the harvest to pass. Just keep on praying and going through the process and keep on being positive. Amen. I don't like the way he smelled when he came by my house, but I'll keep on telling him I love you. I'm, I, I don't like what he did. I don't like what she's doing, but I want to wrap my arm around my child and I want to tell him how much I believe in you and how much I believe you're going to get it together. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. At some point, if anger and disappointment hadn't got you the results, you're going to have to turn back to love. I'm talking to somebody. I said you're going to have to turn back to love and using wisdom. The Bible says, Jesus says, uh, the prophet says, by loving kindness have I drawn thee. Turn back. Turn back. Let me give you this and I'll let you go. It's 12 noon. I got to let you out of here. You got to go eat. Watch, watch this. There's three looks. There's three looks. Three looks. Three looks at verse number six. And I'm going to give them to you very quickly. The first look theologically train up a child here we go in the way they should go stop three looks on that because the first look uh, one, one, a theologian by the name a uh, modern day theologian by the name of Dave Miller uh, brings it to our attention the first look is what Solomon is saying you cannot do Solomon, listen to this, is saying that your children cannot be left to raise themselves and go their own way. 
that your children cannot be left to raise themselves and go without guidance. This is a world they don't know. And I don't care how much his nappy head self say, I, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. No, 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 you got to listen because you ain't ever lived here before. And there's some things I know that's out there that's waiting to devour you, son, waiting to devour you, daughter, and it will eat you alive. Parents, you cannot get weary in giving guidance. I can't leave you to raise yourself and to go your own way. So I have to train you up, which means that some children, you're not going to be able to tell them one time. I would love to tell you one time, and that be it. I should have to just tell you one time, and that be it. But there is also on their parent side the understanding that there must be consistency in the training. Do you know how many times someone was training me in the weight room when I was playing athletics back in Florida? And, and I didn't want to go back in the weight room because I did not like the pressure and the pain that I was feeling. But I remember Coach Robert Jackson, he said, Chester Brown, get your hips back in the weight room because training is never easy. I didn't want to do it, but listen, he pressed me that there must be consistency. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you've got to be consistent in guiding them the way they should go. Don't let your children play you. I'm the adult, and I see you on the wrong path. Who was that that just dropped you off in that car? No, I need to know. Because there was some funny little smell coming out of that car. And I know that wasn't air freshener. And I know how African incense smell, and that was not African incense. Because it looks like you need some guidance. And parents, we cannot get weary in guiding them because they don't know. Hey, huh, come on, come on. I got somebody preaching with me now saying they ain't never walked this way again. They never walked this way before. Let us at least not be negligent of guiding them. Guiding them. Guiding them. Guiding them. I need to know what you're doing. I need to watch what you're doing. Yeah. I, I, I am the FBI at my house. Book bag checks. Huh? I'm, I'm, I'm watching you. Huh? Your eyes red. What's, what's, what's up with you? You're acting a little funny. You look off. What's going on? What's happening with you? Huh? Every stage, I, I need, I, as a parent, I, I got to educate myself of how y'all start acting around 12 when you're starting to go through your hormonal uh, little adjustments. And I, I, I got to walk through this thing with you, you know? Now you get a little mustache, a little hair under your arms, and you, you, you know, you, you, you can tell little girls that's talking to you or something. Give me that cell phone. Let, let me go through it. Don't, don't, amen. Don't, don't let them have a cell phone. Huh? And you don't have access to how to get in. Who calling you? How old is that boy that's calling your phone? Y'all ain't saying nothing. Huh? What grade he in? Ain't nothing wrong with you saying, who's his mama? Where he live? You need to know this stuff. Who his people is? What church he go to? Uh, uh, who's his daddy? I need to know this kind of stuff. Who your friends? Who you hanging with? I need, I gotta know this. Because I made, oh, I'm gonna take a little time here because y'all won't say amen. Because I need to guide you. Oh, I don't have a lot of time to deal with this. But, but, but the first look at this text is that children, is, they're not to raise themselves. I don't care how tall my son gets. 
But Jackson, I walk through the house every now and then and I take a couch and move it with one hand. I, every now and then I walk in and I, he'll tell you. He said, he told, I heard him telling, telling, telling somebody, yeah, man, daddy, daddy's still strong. You right, I am. You didn't see me when I went in the bathroom and took a bunch of ibuprofen for lifting that couch by myself. Daddy, you need some help? No, I don't need no help. Because you're getting tall, Joker. And so since you're getting tall, and you, you know, I, I want to let you know, I, I still got it. I still. <laughs> huh? Because I need to guide you. And as a dad, sometimes I'm finding myself having to go to the basketball court. Even when my bones are aching. Just so I can see what's on your mind. Just so I can engage in some kind of conversation. Just so I can know what girls you're liking. Huh? Just so I can know, so we can get some kind of conversation. Parents, I know you got to work. I know you're tired, you're cooking, you're providing. But we're going to have to come where they are. You got a girl, amen, and she out there hula hooping. I know your hips ain't that big. But mama, get out there and get you one and hula hoop. I want to get a connection with my daughter so I can talk to her. I'm out there, amen, the hula hoop down around my ankles, but I'm, 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 I'm trying. Come on, baby, show me how to do it. So I can engage in some kind of conversation with you. I ain't trying to be your friend, but I need to get in far enough so I can guide you. I need to be able to guide you. Y'all, I got to hurry up. But, but, but look at your neighbor and say, don't let them raise themselves. Don't let them raise themselves. But ladies and gentlemen, here we go, here we go, I gotta hurry. I'm hurrying because I gotta get y'all out of here. Don't allow them to go their own way. But the second look talks about training up a child in the original Hebrew. It says these words, train up a child in his way. Which means now, the other look is, is that you began to lay foundation and you put his way over your way. That the foundation of your family is not your way, but his way. That if you raise your child in the fear and the admonition of the Lord, Amen. I want to give a shout out to all of y'all who, who have gotten your children God children and they ain't got God in them. I'm going I'm to do that again for those on this side that's a little slow and didn't catch that. All of y'all who got your best friend and your homegirl, your shopping buddy, and your salon pal to be a God mother or a God father to your children and they ain't got God in them. The prerequisite for a God parent is God. And if I don't see God in you, how I'm going to make you a God parent? You don't go to nobody's church. You ain't a, in allegiance and alignment. You can be a nice person, but not a God person. You can be a good person and not a God person. Y'all don't hear me here today. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. And I'm going to keep on preaching. And that's why it was important for me in that light, to have a good God, to have good God parents. My God mama was my Sunday school teacher. My God daddy was the superintendent who then passed it on to me at 12 years old as a superintendent of the Sunday school. They raised me up. I remember them coming to pick me up. Huh? They came and picked me up. My mama and daddy was still going, but they came and picked me up. It was my God mama in her class that told me that I needed to be baptized because I thought I was all right because I've been in the church all my life. I'm a church baby. She didn't know Fenton. You got to be baptized. She explained it to me. She gave me the God in her that she had. She the one that got me active in the church before I realized my gift was playing the piano. 
She said, you're going to be an usher with me. You're going to get here on time. You got to make sure the fans are done. Got to make sure everybody's comfortable in the church. You go up, when they come through the door, you come all the way up front. And she gave me that. God parents. They weren't buying me no white uniform to be, to be blessed in as a baby. And buying me all the Christmas stuff. And all the birthday, I'm a God parent, so let me get you the, I got a God died on the first God gift and the first outfit. Come on, church. Until we start teaching this kind of stuff. Huh? It is laying a foundation. I believe it, Congresswoman. It takes a village. It's connecting my child with godly people. I'm going out to the school to see which teacher and every te I need to meet every teacher because I need to see who is my child being influenced by every day what kind of spirit do they have I gotta move last thing is this last thing is this last thing is this and I'm, I'm done I'm done I'm done the last thing is this here we go yeah I'm done is the last look at the text, train up a child in the way they should go, is my favorite one. It is the fact of that you are not trying as a parent, listen to me, to live your life through your child. I, I, I love, I, I love, I love I love what Dr. Stewart said from Gordon Theological Seminary in his book, what he said and how he takes us back into the text of Solomon and says in the Hebrew writing, it is understood that God gives us gifts called children. A child is a gift. Want to know why? Because as they grow and develop, they will present something. There's a present inside of every child that must be presented. And as parents, we cannot be negligent not to realize that that child is a gift. Are y'all hearing me? And do not put your wishes and desires of what you're not or did not do or did not achieve on the shoulders of your child. You the one who wanted to be a nurse and didn't do it. So now don't come trying to make her a nurse when she ain't designed to be no nurse. Because what the text suggests is as you train them up in the way they should go, it means that you are so attentive to that child, watch this, and the gifting that's in that child. See, and I, wanna, I, wanna, I was on my way to church coming down 77 this morning, and I'm done. And the Lord said, make sure you tell the father and the mother that is rejecting the gift that's in their child because you don't like that gift. And you don't want your child to have that and do that. And so you're talking down on what they really love. Huh? Huh? You know, cause he, you know, okay, okay, so, so he is writing rap and, poet, and poetry, he called it poetry, but it's rap stuff. And he does be bopping, I ain't my child, you to take that mess out your ears. And I, I, hold on, mom, wait a second. The Lord gave me this, coming here this morning. He said, tell them to hold up a second. That if he writing rhymes, or she writing rhymes, what you ashamed of? And he, he got a whole book. Look at us. Uh, you ain't gonna be no, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna do that. No, uh, no. Uh, uh, stop all that rapping to me. And you on the corner and this and I, I did with your little friends uh, down there. And y'all, y'all exchanging rhymes. Are you for real? No. If that's a gift, bring your child in the house. Put him on the computer. And say, I see you like this rapping and all this kind of stuff, huh? All right. Well, we're going to look at the college because if you all into that kind of stuff, you need a degree in it. 
You need, you need to go, and since you like music, like, yeah, I, I want to produce this kind of, okay, since you want to produce it, I ain't going to beat you on that, okay, so you need to go down to A&T, we're going to send you to A&T, and I want you to get your grades up, because, and help them to understand this gift that you have, ain't nothing wrong with this, because you may be the one that will get the platform to change the world, and so, and you may influence a group, that, oh, but let me just get you educated, let me get you down there to fam you, or get you down to A&T, or down to Johnson C. Smith, or down to Livingstone, and one of the music departments, so you can develop this, and so you understand you need to have a degree in production, and then you need to have a master's in business, so you can own your own rights, and your own come on church as parents we're gonna have to stop being so close-minded and stop making our children a lottery ain't nothing wrong with making sure they in the YMCA ain't nothing wrong with making sure we're putting more time you spending time with them at the at the at the at the basketball court but if you, if you miss the NBA, I want you, since you love basketball and sports, I want to take you down here and tell you you need to have a, a, a bachelor's of some sort in, in, in sports information. So that when you don't get drafted, you will have something. And if they are, the fact of that, okay, you're going to get drafted, fine. But you ain't going to the league until you graduate. Uh, go to the league and graduate because you, your knees ain't going to last forever. You're only one injury away from being back at the house with me. Come on now. Come on. Come on. I got to train them up in the way they should go. You're gifted in this. You're gifted in that. So now I need to groom that. I need to embrace that because that's the way they should go. I mean, don't beat the child to death because he didn't tore up the, the tore apart the radio and he didn't took apart the, 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 the CD player and the DVD player and got all, in, got all these batteries, I understand, and then got the acid in your carpet from the batteries. Are you about to beat him to death? Stop. Stop. Now, he might, because, because verse, number, verse, number, that, verse number 15, I believe it is, say, you might have to put the rod on him. But stop. At some point and say, why is this child tearing up every... Come on, why is it? Maybe there's a gift and a curiosity in mechanical engineering. Are y'all hearing me? Are you understanding what pastor's trying to tell you? And so therefore, I need to start steering you. I cannot put this, I cannot put this down. I cannot put this down until I tell you. So if that's the case, and I'm done. This is my last close. If that's the case, if you know and you're going to embrace the way they should go, they are not going to become just by osmosis. You have to intentionally put them in the path of their success that centers around their gift. Income tax is coming. Some of you didn't got your income tax. Sis, bro, I need you to put aside before you go and get all, all dolled up. And I'm the best mother in the world. I deserve it. Yeah, but you still got a child here. And, and you might need to send them to a summer camp. Save some of that money. Then send them to a science camp and a math camp and a reading camp. Come on, church. You understand? To send them because I see what your gift is. I need to say it. Stash aside some money because I'm going to have to send. I didn't did send coal and, 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 and put my middle boy through, you line it out and put them through band camp, man, that, that money, man, there was some, some months we were eating beans and, 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 and leftovers. But to finally hear that we, we, we're sitting in the band camp, band camp, fam you, March 100, want to follow in daddy's footsteps, March, I got to get in March 100, and we're sending you to camp, 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 ain't got the money. But to finally hear last week, fam, you was just at school, dad, they auditioned me, dad. And 
mentee was at school, Dad. They auditioned me, Dad. Scholarship, Dad. Full ride, Dad. <laughs> Cookman said yes. But I want to go fam you, Dad. And they said, come on. We'll take you. But we had to invest into the direction of the way he should go. In the direction of the gift. I'm praying that you and we as parents would be wise. Pay attention. Maybe struggling a little bit. But it's, 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 it's okay. Keep praying. Be consistent. Keep wrapping your arms around them. My oldest son, our oldest boy, just wandering around in the wilderness. But then I thought about it. Yeah, at this age, I was doing the same thing. <laughs> it's going to take him a minute. But finally, he called and said, Dad, I'm not going to college. I said, where well, you going? What you want to do? Dad, I don't... The rest of the family want me to go to the Navy. Want to go to the Army. But Daddy, I really don't want to do that. Son, you don't have to. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? He drops his head and he says, well, honestly, all my life I've been influenced by truck driving. I say, truck driving? He say, yes, sir. I'm sorry. I don't want to. College ain't, college just ain't it. I say, okay. Truck driving? He said, yeah. I said, what else? He said, I, I, I want to go into trucking. I said, okay. He said, I, wanna, I, I actually believe I can own a business. I said, so if, 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 if that's the case, technical college, Yolanda and I was talking and throwing it back and forth. Tech, yeah, tech, okay, so we go down and you get this endorsement, this endorsement, this is, some, this is the way you need to go. Go down and get this endorsement. I need you to see this person and see that person and get the application lively technical and you can get your CDLs okay and in the meantime you'll work for your uncle who drives trucks and you can get your own truck and save up and then he says I can start doing my own business I said yes but that's the way you should go because one day they're going to get old one day they're going to get old and if you lay the foundation, they will not depart. They will not depart from the foundation of manners and the, and the, and the customs and the, and, 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 and the godly ways and godly paths. I want to pray for every parent today who's been worried about your children. You know? Listen, I promise you, if you put it in them, it may get hidden under a whole lot of rubble and stuff. But if you know you put the godly path and way in your child, I want to encourage you. They may stray, but they will not depart. I don't know when it's going to come alive in them, but it will. It will.